Yes. So one of the neat things here at Tweetsie Railroad for their Heritage Weekend on both days, uh, you can actually, there's two, on Saturday, as far as like today, there's two train, uh, two time frames to tour the train shop. Um, we've got the 2.30 time slot. And tomorrow on Sunday, the day two, it's uh, only one time to, uh, to, tour the time sh uh, to tour the train shop. And that's out also at 2.30. That's pretty much what we're going to do next and then uh, also look on into uh, get a closer look at engine 12 and historic coach card number five. All right, so we are in the train shop here now. They also here in the train shop that's actually pretty neat to see is train car number two is back from uh, being restored. And so uh, we're gonna do a Q&A here at the train shop. about 20 years total. Uh, this is the Sweetsy Railroad train shop. We built this shop in 97. We moved in here from the old shop back behind this building. All the equipment you see in this building used to be in that building. So all this, it's very small. Um, a little bit about the shop. We started here in 1957. Uh, Frank Coffey started the Tweets Railroad shops. It was store number 12. The original passenger cars. Um, then uh, he established a shop here when they got 190 and rebuilt it. Um, over the years, we've uh, We've done a lot of work for other companies like Dollywood, Walt Disney World, Busch Gardens, uh, pretty much any railroad operation that's narrow gauge on the East Coast. We've done a lot of work for it. A um, little about the machinery here. Um, at the far end is the 300 ton wheel press. We still use it to press railroad wheels on the axle. And uh, a lot of other things. A lot of people are here to come up here because they're big enough press to press things on and off their uh, hardware. Uh, right next to it is our 1890s vintage uh, wheel. Uh, we use it just to contour wheels, but there's a new set of wheels. Which set of wheels I'm getting ready to contour probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, it takes about a day and a half to set car wheels, about two days to do engine driver. Um, those two machines came out of the Johnson City engine house where 12 ran out of in their original career. Uh, the rest of the machines, uh, one's from Roanoke Shops, I think that one is. 
Best of them just oh, being here. Wait, uh, wait. We have a uh, drop hit where y'all standing right there. Don't worry, it ain't gonna open up. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we can drop the driving wheels out of the locomotives. Bring them in here. So I haven't jacked the engine up and take the wheels down. So we did that last one at 190. We're gonna do it again while number 12 is down. Um, we do all kinds, there's 11 of us that work in here. We all have all kinds of different skills and trades. Uh, some of us are machinists, plumbers, welders, fabricators, uh, mechanics, auto mechanics. We all do a little bit of everything. Uh, about three or four of us take care of the railroad and about the other five of us take care of the rides and the park. Uh, we used to do everything, but the park's gotten so big, we've had to split maintenance into two divisions. So it makes it very helpful for us. Uh, you see, every ride, every train car, every piece of equipment you've got comes through here every year. Uh, our operating season's gotten a lot shorter with Christmas, so we have to pick and choose our priorities much more diligently than we used to. Uh, so uh, here we're capable of completely rebuilding the locomotive. Uh, there's certain things we can't do, certain things we can do. Uh, certain parts we can make, certain parts we can't make. But majority of the consumable parts we can make in this shop. And we do. All the bearings, uh, rings, compressors, we rebuild, uh, generators, pretty much everything. Uh, this train car behind you is the fourth car we've been rebuilt. Uh, this was a handicapped car for years. Uh, we uh, just got it back Monday. It'll be restored in the Kentucky. It'll be on the train next week. And we'll replace the red car. It's up next to him. So uh, we've been in the program. These cars right here are 50 years old since they rebuilt them. So we're sending every one to Kentucky, one by one, except for the last car and what is now the second car. The second car on the train is brand new. This is It's on its first full season. So. And the rear car, we built it about 25 years ago, so we don't need to leave just yet. Um, of course, we got our antique coach car. Benjamin probably told you about it. It's from the East Broad Top Railroad. They've traced it back to 1882. That's as early as they found it. They think it was built in 1870. We don't know for sure, but one of these days, we can tear into it and might be able to find the date. So, but we keep it in the shed. It's pretty much our pride and joy, almost <laughs> as much as the engine. But uh, I know y'all have heard about number 12, and uh, number 12 is down for a while. We, uh, we're doing a preventive maintenance inspection on it. What we were getting ready to do, we are getting ready to reflu the engine this winter. So we're kind of checking around, to see what else we might want to need to do while we're in there. And we got in there and found some thin spots in the firebox. And so we did our due diligence and reported to the state. And they asked us to take the engine out of service until the repairs are made. So everything is in the early stages. We just have identified the problem. Uh, once rail fan weekend is over, we're going to start disassembling number 12 and investigate a little bit. See if there's anything else. See how far we need to go with repair determine what needs to be done. Uh, we don't know when it will return to service, but it will return to service. I'd say we would love to have it next year at some point, but there's no guarantees of that right now. Because uh, a lot of the uh, people in the industry know how to do this have passed away. So a lot of shops, there's only a few shops that can do certain things like being in the sheets and stuff. So we have to get in line if we have to do that. So, um, but the repairs will be done. She'll be back in service, hopefully, for long. Uh, really can't answer no more questions about it, because you know as much as I know. <laughs> so, I mean, we've been doing conference calls and stuff this week and meeting with inspectors and laying out a plan. Nothing we really can say to the public yet, but we are going to fix it, and it will be back. Just we don't know exactly what day yet. So. I'll know the day before y'all do, probably.
sorry. Um, but we also go reef hanger and give her a good refurbishment while she's born. So when she comes back, she'll be like me. So uh, unfortunately, that means 190 has to run until it's fixed. But we went through 190 this winter, replaced a bunch of parts on it and all that. So she should be pretty good for a year or so. So, um, but um, y'all got any questions? Because I can explain all this in more detail if people have specific questions. Or because I can make it awful boring if I don't. <laughs> yes, sir. The ghost train. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us don't either, but, um, but it, it's uh, probably our second most popular event. Uh, it's, uh, when I started out doing it, it was much different. And, uh, now that Christmas is going on, everybody loves Christmas time and Halloween things. So some of us is just kind of a sideshow, you know. So, yeah. That is our uh, 10 ton crane we use in here. It picks up uh, drivers, anything we want. We'll pick up these train cars off the wheel sets. Um, so uh, we use it a lot to pick the drivers up, set them in the lathe, and stuff like that. Yes, sir. How much can it pick up? 10 tons. So it's double what it's called. Uh, 10 ton crane. Yeah, if that 20,000 pounds. Yeah, and this uh, that wheel set right there weighs uh, right about a ton. You keep saying we use it to lift up the drive. What are the driving wheels out of the engine? When we get them into that pit, we have to get them up. And uh, the main set of drivers on 190 weighs 6,000 pounds. And that's the one that have the connecting rods. Right? That's the big. That's, that's the, the one that has all those thing connects to. It weighs six thousand pounds. None of us could pick that up. <laughs> our tractor, our loader, won't even pick that. Up, you know, so we have to pick it up out of fifty. Mm -hmm. so we have to took a boiler off that engine with it. Well, we had a Disney engineer lift the boiler up, set it on. But that was twenty years ago. So, but any more, next, any more questions? Yeah. Do you have any objection if I just walk around and look at the machines? No, absolutely. Go oh, ahead. Hey, that's what the tour is for. I grew up in South Africa. My father was a fitter on steam. Yeah. And so the first, my, my formative years was around steam engines all yeah. the time. And time spending, we used to call this a loco. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so we had Garrett's and 15Fs and all the strange machines that you guys don't have over here. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, I, I love it. Yeah. Feel free to look around, just watch yourself over behind the wheel lathe. There's Thank you. The couplers for that car is actually out. Other, other machine shops just across the border on the Gunsmith over here on Mountain. Oh. And so lathes and milling machines and everything is like pretty much in my blood. So. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Interesting question. I know some folks don't like the ghost train, but as a uh, curious question, how long does it take you guys to dress up 190 and take the decorations off when it's all said and done? Um, to decorate it, usually we do it in about a week. Uh, normally we'll do it right. We'll let it cool off, and then we'll do it a week or two later. Right. Uh, right before. That way, just in case we have to run or jump 12 went down. Exactly. Um, uh, we'll probably do it like we'll probably start on it like a week before. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what extent we're going to do it this year. Yeah, because you got to do double you gotta, duty. You've got to do double duty. We will use the skull. We're going to modify right. where it goes on and off easier. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the most onerous part of putting all that on? The skull. <laughs> the skull, because uh, the way we put it on for years, it's made to go on there and stack. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we've got to take it, make it go on there and come off. Oh, okay. Usually it goes on there and just stays. <laughs> and uh, we can't really get it on there with it fired the way we put it on. Because uh, a man has to get in between the skull and <coughs> the boiler. Right. So we're going to change it, make a hook system where we can hook it on and lift it up and take it off really easy. Okay. So, Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, we don't do the hunting. The entertainment does. But it take, they're going to start on it Labor Day Monday. And then it'll be done by the about 5th day. So, yeah. Oh, uh, what are y'all going to do about 190 since 12 can't run during the day during ghost train? 190 is going to run day and night. <laughs> We, well, back in uh, when I first started here, we ran 190 day and night for ghost trains. 12 didn't run in the fall. We only started using 12 when we got the new skull in around 2000. That's when we started switching them out, doing one by day, one by night. So it's kind of going to be a little bit back to the old days. So, um, yeah. Why don't you put a pumpkin head on there? <laughs> I the skull. That's just what's all been on it for all these years. We think the skull doesn't look good. <laughs> I've seen pictures of it, but it doesn't look good. Hey. I have a paper one at my house. Oh, yeah. I made a paper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what qualifications uh, is required to be an engineer or a fireman? Well, to be a fireman, uh, we usually don't hire firemen off the street. We've always hired firemen out of the park, usually. Somebody will come in the park working at country fair or other aspects and show their diligence, their care, the work ethic. And if we like them, we need a fireman, sometimes we'll grab them. But to be an engineer, you have to fire the train for at least two or three years. Then it starts the two or three year process to learn to run. So to go from fireman to engineer usually takes four or five years. It's just, we have such a steep road and it's so dangerous. You need to know both jobs really well in order to uh, keep everything safe. Right, and if I could ask a follow-up question, what about conductors? It... Um, we're not as strenuous on that one. So. Okay. Um, the conductor does have to have a little bit of mechanical skill, but it, because uh, he's in charge of the cars and stuff, the but not, not as much. The uh, big thing conductor is no AV. The conductor actually controls all the audio back there on the train. So. Yeah. So you got the wheel legs. What is this one right here? Just a regular lathe. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just a lathe. I don't know the special name to it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So that is Bollywood has locomotives that are the same make and model Z. Are there any other parts around the US that has locomotives similar to that? Uh far as no. Uh, 190 and 192 are the only two like left. Uh, actually White Pass has one of them left. It's up there on display. But since there was only ten built, there's only three left. So uh, us and Dollywood have have both of them. Yeah. yeah. And we do have we're fortunate enough to have a large amount of square park. Yeah. So, so I'd say there's a lot of home y'all a lot. We rely on each other actually. Believe it or not, uh, I came I was in Dollywood before I came back to Sweetie. We built a network system between them. Since we got dual engines, same engines, we share the molds, patterns and stuff. Because we don't cast up very often, but neither do they. So yeah. we both co own the pattern. So we need something, they cast it. We need something, we cast it. So, but yeah. Uh, what engine do y'all run the most? Um, <laughs> about 50 50 up until last week. So uh, last year, 12 actually made more trips than one night. So, so, uh, yeah. With 12 being down, you were double duty. If something's wrong, <laughs> if something's wrong, we will be. Um, but uh, like I told, we did a lot of work to 190 last winter and this spring, so we've got her pretty stable. Unless something unforeseen happens, she should be pretty solid for a year or two. So. I didn't quite hear earlier. What was the issue found on 12? Uh, some thin sheets in the fireball. That's just, it's a normal. The machine's 107 years old. Is it the crown sheet? 
No, side sheet. Down near the fire. Right where the fire. That's where the most wear on the locomotive usually happens, where the fire is. So, but uh, it just just didn't meet the minimals for the safe operation. So we don't want nobody to get hurt. Our crew or our people. So yeah. What gives y'all the most trouble out of the Various, various year to year. Uh, 190 this year, we've had a little bit of issues with grates just because they're aging out and stuff like that. And uh, that grate problem broke two stay bolts. So we had to change the stay bolts in May, but, or July, I'm sorry. So it just varies each year. It just depends on, we're trying to stay on top of it best we can. Yeah. Can we have any more questions? What is your annual maintenance budget? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, um, I'll say this, whatever the train needs it. Yes. Okay. So, uh, unlike Hollywood, this place wouldn't make it without the train. But we'll do whatever it takes to keep the train operating safely and efficiently. And the same thing for the rides. Yeah. Um, we do go through the rides just as much as we do the railroad equipment every year. So, how long yeah. does it take to um, do Christmas? Like, how long does it take to put up all the decorations and fix everything? Um, right about three and a half weeks. Well, what, here's the thing. When we close in October, we got to take this place from Halloween back to normal to Christmas. So that whole first week we closed, we're getting rid of Halloween. Then we start Christmas the next month. And then uh, some years, it all depends on where Thanksgiving falls. This year, Thanksgiving falls late, so we have a few extra days. And a couple years ago, we had I think Thanksgiving was early. We were plugging lights in that before, right before the first train left. That's how <laughs> tight it was. So, but it'll take us a little longer this year too because we got to, we're going to decorate 190 up like 12. So it'll look just as good as 12. When we got everything fit. So yeah. How'd you get your start in trains? I was a ride operator from the country fair. For two seasons and then a uh, full-time position came up from here and uh, started firing the train i've always enjoyed them since i was a kid fascinated by them i love the history behind the 12 and the, it, the trains here and i just fell into it you know it's all because i went to appalachian sometimes i say i wish i went to wilmington school to appalachian <laughs> but, but uh, it's been a fun field career I worked all over the country, uh, Durango, uh, Virginia and Truckee, uh, Dollywood, and Tweets. Yeah. Uh, what is the like long-term plan as far as once uh, all the cars have you know had their wood and rebuilt and stuff with the six cars? Is it just kind of going to be a spare? Or? Well, what we're going to do, um, it may be dictated by number 12 for next year. We do annual maintenance on the cars, but we used to do in October, one a week. Well, now we're going to take one off a month. Bring it in here, paint it, refurbish it, check it out, send it back out, bring another one. Because when, when the boat's agent, when everything's done running for the railroad, hey, what's going on? It'll be a perfect time to refurbish your car. You know. So that, that's the idea. Like the, the green cars were done first, so they'll come in next summer and get a paint job, get inspected, get the wheels checked. That's the plan. We're going to do the caboose this winter too. Okay. It's not leaving, so we're going to bring it in here and paint it to match the new red car. Okay. But and one thing you may notice the colors. We went back to the original colors. We found a paper in the office from 1976 that told us the original colors for this style of car. And the one of the reasons we did it is this I just soot. Them things spit so out. The cars look great one trip. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, have y'all ever thought of like so is the like the multiple 
What I'm trying to say is like, y'all ever use the spare cars like on a normal basis, like to hook up to the main train, or can the train only pull five cars? Does it have like a weight limit or something? Um, and how much it can pull? We're not gonna pull six because you can't see the show. Oh. The show sites are made right now. They're like Fort Boone. The engine's at the tree. The back of the caboose is at the cup. So there's not much, you know. So we're going to keep the regular train at five cars. Um, we know number 12 will pull six. No problem. Well, 90 would struggle getting out of the holdup a little bit if it's six full cars. So if we ever do six, it's probably going to be for pass through events. Oh, okay. Like Christmas. But they're... We don't think we're going to do six anytime soon. But having a spare car yeah. and that option to use six, we need it. Yeah. So, uh, that's what we were doing a few years ago when we were running the coach with the other five cars. We're kind of seeing it with wood pull six. Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of experimentation, seeing what it would do. So, any more questions? So will, uh, will y'all use this shop in here to like tear down 12 and still have enough room to do your regular maintenance or do y'all tear that down in another one of your other buildings? No, we'll tear it down right here where they're, right where they're standing probably. Um, that, well, right now it's still got the tender on it. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll lose the tender probably sometime next week. And uh, once you get rid of that, we'll it'll take much room. Okay. So, we'll probably leave the tender on it long enough to strip the cab out, but after that, the tender will disappear. Because yeah, there won't, won't be no need for it until it operates again. Yeah. Is the tender going to get going for two and refurbished? It's going to get repainted. I don't know if we'll do much more than that. It's pretty good shape. 12s is so. But, yeah. Are y'all ever going to put 190 Blackhouse 5 Sean whistle back on? Maybe at some point. We don't actually own that. So we have to borrow it to use it. And uh, maybe for uh, an event, for an anniversary or something. So, no plans anytime soon, though. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 190, 185, number 12 is 180. So, yeah. uh, what, what engine has more problems, 12 or 190? About 50-50. Oh, okay. It's, just, uh, it's the degree of the problem that, you know, but they take about the same amount. Uh, ironically, the engines, <laughs> you know, I know they're machines, but they kind of got personalities. Anytime one's always been down, the other one has always came through. <laughs> it's kind of like they know, you know, but when one's down, the other one just goes. <laughs> and then uh, it's just weird, I guess. So, yeah. I feel like I remember hearing some discussion last year about the whistles getting rebuilt. Is that? It's already been done. Both of them? Okay. It was done a few years ago. Okay. Yeah. But we've been trying to tune 190s for a few years trying to get it all back in. So, yeah. So with your, uh, with your car rebuilds, are you replacing the friction bearings with roller bearings or just back the friction? No. Uh, to change the friction bearings out, we have to change the axles. And all the wheels are virtually brand new. And we have an endless stock of brass bearings. So we're just going to stick with it until... Until we have to replace the wheels, then we'll probably try to convert. It'd save a lot of money in oil if we did. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So with this being a wall sort, do you have like an apprenticeship program or anything like that? Sort of, yeah. We uh, we all, uh, Matt and I have been here the longest. We kind of try to pass down a little bit of the knowledge uh, from what we were taught. So best thing if you're in here working it's one thing i'm thankful i had the old guys here when i started and i listened so um listening to the old man i had frank coffee frank coffee was still alive when i started and he had a lot of you had to filter through stuff but you could uh, you, you listen you learned a lot and then uh, you know it's like running the engines you know, Matt taught me how to run, the other one taught me how to run a little bit for everybody. Then I kind of made my own way, you know. Same thing, I started, I started being a machinist last year. This year doing wheels and stuff. I watched Rick for years till he retired. Actually, I didn't learn to turn wheels till about two weeks before he retired. So, <laughs> I've been learning on my own this winter, this summer doing it, so. But it's a, 
apprenticeship, pass it down, try to find new generations who are willing to learn it. That's the hard part. Yeah. Uh, nobody, wants to get hands dirty nobody wants to get their hands dirty anymore. There's a, there's a finite group of people that love this stuff. You know? so, and uh, yeah. we're hoping we can pass it on to some generations that will appreciate it as much as we have. Applications in the back? Uh, <laughs> when we have openings, yeah. So, um, most time it's the mechanical positions that we're hiring. Train crew usually stays pretty solid. You know, most everybody's here loves what they're doing. Or we wouldn't be here. So. We do a lot with community college and that's why I asked. Never really thought of that. We probably should. Yeah. The pro well, problem with community colleges, they're not teaching manual machining no more. That much. Yeah. Finding a man that can operate a manual lathe is yeah. hard nowadays. Everything's all computerized. Yeah. You know. Or everything on every twist of a knob on that thing changes it. It's all the manual. Cause we we actually cut them. We cut. I cut them tre the treads, the flanges freehanded. You cut it with just freehanded by turning the cutter with with turning the little handle. So it takes about two hours to cut the flange after you do the tread. So but, uh, any more questions? Yeah. So whenever you bring number 12 in here, you tear it all the way down to the boiler? We're going to strip the tubes out of it now and open up. And then we're going to take the cab off and strip the firebox. Okay. We're going to NDT the boiler from the inside out and then NDT the firebox. We're outside the firebox, inside the cab. So we won't be the first time we had a cab off in about 25 years. So. Like I said, we're going to refurbish it too once it down. Go ahead and repaint it, get everything ready. So when it comes back out, it'll look brand new. Is the green paint on the locomotives the same as the green paint on the passenger cars, or is it slightly different? Um, The shade is not the same. Though. The green on the engines is what we call it. We call it woodland green. And then the colors on the cars, I don't really know what the green color is. I know that's... Uh, I call it ASU yellow, <laughs> but because uh, really that's what it is. But uh, that's like a ferrite yellow. It's an old name. But uh, no, the engine green and the car green. Coach is going to get repainted here at the too. So get rid of the safety green. But that's way down the list now. The 12 is priority. So. The one eye is in great shape. You know. It's it's in good shape. So prior to the shop being built, who did a lot? Like how did they handle maintenance work on the locomotives? Was it didn't you just on a smaller scale? Or? Okay. That same stuff. The drive wheels and stuff they send up down city. So it was machine. Yeah. So when they took out the machine shop, it was about machine here. Okay. All right, guys, so that was the uh, train shop here at Tweetsie Railroad. It's um, really, a, really one of the neat things, unique things that they get to do um, as far as on the Heritage Weekend, letting you tour it, ask questions that need it to be. Hope y'all liked the video, and if y'all did, help us out. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. And outside of that, we will catch y'all next time. Later.
in both please remember to remain seated until the train has come to a safe and complete stop and the train car and Yeah. <laughs>